Hello and welcome to my new video. Today I will discuss the temperature stability in the Yobo system and comparison between the Yobo system and actually classical Patterson immersion C41 processing. And I will make some simple experiments and I will test what actually happens with the temperature, uh, if it's drifting, if it's changing, what is the stability cause and what is the downsides if your color actually shifts because your temperature is not stable. And you can get all types of different artifacts on your film if you develop at home and not developing in a proper industrial grade, for example, deep and dank tools or standard mini lab tools. And also I will give you some advices what you can do and probably improve your stability and improve your quality of prints and quality of the film development, which is more important than the quality of the prints which you produce. Because when you have a good negatives, it's much easier to produce good prints. Let's preheat the bath and usually it takes 5 to 20 minutes, it depends on the temperature in the room. For test I will set up exactly 38 degrees and use an empty bottle and fill it with the clean water and wait until everything will be heat up and stabilized with the normal state of the operation of the, my processor. For temperature control I will use one of the easiest, cheapest solution what you can find for your darkroom. It's a precise human body thermometer. It doesn't really work for black and white, but it perfectly works for color photography. And if you take a look for both of them, I have one kitchen one and one for human body. And right away you can understand the difference between two of them. Human body one have a resolution of the two hundredths of the degree and the precision of 0 0.1 degree. And in the best case, kitchen one have resolution of 0 0.1 degree, but the precision of 0 0.5 degrees. And easy stupid test for thermometers, which is goes up to 100 degrees, is actually boil the water and check what is the temperature of the boiling water with the thermometer. And after boiling the water, you can see if it's around 100, you can be sure that in a short interval of the 30 degrees, it actually will be quite accurate and you can more or less trust the thermometer what you have at home. But in my case, because I have a heavily modified Yobo system, it's kind of not enough. And I need to also check if my temperature couple works and precisely show the 100 degrees. Because as we discussed previously in my previous videos of modification of the system, it's quite off in terms of the temperature and it's not really calibrated. So you have a calibration parameter inside and you can adjust a little bit your set point. And adjusted to the 100 degree is actually quite nice and it's one point calibration and it's just calibrating offset and not the slope of the curve. And after this simple trick my temperature is actually quite close to the temperature what I have on my controller and thermometer. But also keep in mind the internal one what you have in the Yobo CP2 Plus is completely not precise to these two human body thermometers. And as you understand, even between the two human body thermometers, you have a deviation in the set point of the temperature. But in my case, they're quite precise and they kind of are showing what they claim to show. And the difference of 0.1 degree is in the margin of the calibration error for this type of devices. Keep it in mind for C41 process, it's process window of 0.2 degrees in the process time. So it means you can easily use this thermometer as a best cheap solution for your darkroom. Downside, it's not fast, but nothing is fast, so just keep it in mind, measure several times and do not wait to accommodate for the temperature immediately after you press the button. And the first problem, and if you even set up the temperature of 38 degrees on your thermostat, it doesn't matter if it's internal, really not precise one or digital one, you will never get the perfect temperature inside the bottles and you will never get the temperature inside the drum, which is exactly 38 degrees. And I will run simple tests. Without preheating the drum, I will pour inside the water and initial temperature was 37.7 degrees. And I rotate it for 3 minutes 15 seconds as a standard C41 processing and pour it back in a bottle. And immediately after that, I measure the temperature in the bottle. And as you can see, if you not preheat the drum, you have dramatic change of temperature to 36.6 degrees. So this is for sure no go and also keep it in mind I modify my Yobo with a circulator system 
so it's much faster and much better and now I point it to directly to the drum and hoping it will help to actually heat up the drum faster and even without preheating I expecting to be a little bit better with the temperature stability over time but anyway I have half degree deviation from the 38 degrees just because the bottle itself, insulator, and it's a plastic one, it's actually not really conducting properly temperature inside the bottle. But now I try to preheat the drum and put the water in the drum and pour it out after 3 minutes 15 seconds and exactly the same way the measured temperature and the result what will came out from this small experiment. I preheat thermometer in exactly the same bath, so it will take less time to actually equilibrate with the temperature inside the bottle. But anyway, you can see the temperature is actually dropping and it's almost half a degree. So I decided to improve my temperature stability and switch as many people actually did for the Yoba system to just put the seaweed system. And I will use it now as a, just a little bit of kick, so I turn off the heating system inside the Yoba and use this replacement heating system and I just want to see what is the result of this solution will be. And the first thing and the temperature and the set point of the whole system is actually far off. As far as I understand, this is not PD regulator and by default it they have something like half degree resolution and precision of the thermocouple inside. And also it will drift over time, so the good idea to just actually set up a little bit higher temperature in my case, I set it up to 38.4 degrees and measure close by and in the bottle. And I have more or less the same deviation, so it's 37.6 degrees in the bottle, but it's actually set up for 38.4 degrees and the water itself in the bath 38 degrees exactly. So I preheat the drum, pour the solution and I still have a kind of a double circulation inside my Yoba system from the Cinesteel circulator and from the small pump what I installed in my Yoba system. And with exactly the same experiment I just repeated several times and as you can see the result is actually a little bit worse for some reason. So the good preheating of the drum is quite significantly changed the temperature behavior of the final solution. So now I will record the data and we can analyze it a little bit later. So I check the starting temperature three times and now I want to try to improve the heating of the drum itself and I will constantly pour water on top of the drum for 3 minutes 15 seconds and pour the solution from the drum to the bottle and immediately measure temperature inside the bottle. And after all of these measurements I also checked different setups and different types of the attachments to my drum for paper and for film and I actually find out that the, for paper it works a little bit strange because I don't really have a volume so rest of the tests I made just with the film caps but also I don't really have a spools inside but in ideal case scenario we're starting with a 37.6 degrees and end up with a 37.2 degrees and even if I pour the water constantly on top of the drum for 3 minutes 15 seconds, it doesn't really change a lot. It's telling me that the water agitation and actually heating of the drum from one side with the rotation is sufficient, so I don't really see any difference between the both methods. It's just telling us that the drum itself have a temperature resistance and the plastic there is not crazy optimal solution. And as a last resort, I actually tried the old method, what I used before, and it's kind of a cheaper solution for most of the people who just, you know, weakened warrior in the film photography and develop once in a while. And for this method, I used exactly the same bottle, I printed this holder to just not hold the thermometer by hand, and I put the, this printed part design in my comments. And also I will use immersion method of the Patterson drum and it's quite good method and I really like how it works for simplicity of it and I will preheat the drum itself and just imagine the film is already loaded there and in the preheated drum I will pour the solution and wait basically for 3 minutes 15 seconds with some agitation and also this drum have a spools inside. And as you can see the temperature here is actually dropping quite dramatically and it's almost 0.8 degrees because this time I actually adjust for the temperature inside the bottle 
And if you measure, not directly in a drum, but even after the bottle, it's heating up a little bit higher. Meanwhile, I start to measuring, but it's anyway 0.7 degrees off from the final solution. And now let's start the discussion on how we actually can solve it and prevent some problems in future. I dig up two plots from the manual of the codec. I also put the link in the comment below and you can find it in the end of this manual. On the left plot, you can see the change in temperature and how significantly it changes density of the film. And most importantly, it's actually changing density not only film, it's also changing the density of the each layer. And the problem is if your temperature is off, your layers kind of uh, exposed a little bit differently. So we'll get the color casts. Yes, most of the time you can fix them a little bit with the scanning, but we're talking about the dark room and in the dark room, as you can understand, not everything you can fix and in any way you need to get the good negatives with a good color balance because of that you actually have better and richer colors in the final result even with the scanning. And on the right plot you can see the deviation in color with the time. And just imagine you're not really precise, which is kind of impossible with the hand development, with the timing. So usually you're overdeveloping because you're not really using stop bath. But if in the same time you overdeveloping by default because you never use the stop bath and you have temperature drop on one degree from the nominal, you're actually in a big trouble in terms of color and color reproduction and all sorts of things and mostly your highlights actually will suffer and your maximum dynamic range will suffer. But in this video we will just stop on the temperature and one of the good solutions how you can fix it is actually to overheat your bath. So you can run exactly the same experiment what I ran before, try to minimize the temperature gap between the preheating and after heating and find what is the difference in temperature. And when you start to developing, you actually can start developing not from the 38 degrees, but a little bit higher. And it depends on your chemicals, but usually actually codec using 100 Fahrenheit, which is 37.8 degrees. So you can start a little bit higher and from there you can drop down the temperature so basically you need a dance around the process window. So if your temperature is dropping 0.6 degrees, you just need to start with a 0.3 degrees higher than the nominal point. And as you can see, the starting of the development will be a little bit on a split part and your finish also will be a little bit on a split part of the colors. But overall temperature of the process will be close enough to optimal process temperature. This is a simple trick, but also I think as community, we need to think about how to improve the methods and how to actually step up from the temperature baths and go to direct heating as the rest of the community and all the modern engineering tools goes to direct heating and PD regulators and actually ceramic heaters, for example, for soldering irons even in the 3D printers and the rest of the modern tools. And as far as I understand, stability and time extremely important for your color reproduction. So keep it in mind and I hope this type of suggestions help you. And as you can see, it's not so obvious what is a good and what is a bad in terms of stability, but definitely, yes, you will give you a little bit of advantage in the development because you have a chemicals which is preheated in the same kind of way. And in exactly the same time, you have a rotation which is happening with this relatively small amount of volume. And it's kind of a thin wall and you have a level of water which should be exactly the same level of the chemicals what you have inside the drum. But in the same time, it's a, a little bit different temperature resistance of the materials of your bottles and of your basically the plastic case of the tank itself. So I think the only one limitation of this thing, uh, you cannot really reach the perfect plus minus 0.1 or 0.2 degrees temperature stability in this type of systems. You need a PID regulator, you actually need to have a tank of uh, well mixed and homogeneous temperature mixed uh, solutions. So it's almost impossible actually to get with the bath and with the water type of systems, get the 
proper fixed temperature of your development over the time of development. And this is crazy important actually not for the bleach and fix and rate like later steps, but it's crazy important for development step. And the development step uh, can be exactly three minutes, 15 seconds, but in principle, if you want to push the film, if you want to make more advanced development, and if you want to reach the full color potential of the film itself, and especially nowadays it's getting a little bit expensive side uh, of the development and using expensive film like Portra 800, Portra 400, these types of film, uh, and they not really fully developed inside your tank. It's kind of a shame. So I will also think about it in future and I hope this video was really inspirational and you can <laughs> earn a little bit more knowledge about the color and film photography and color film development. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.